Welcome to the Spider Cellar. I'm Shayla and I build and design miniature worlds. Hey, quick disclaimer, this video does contain spoilers for the video game Disco Elysium, so proceed at your own risk. Today, I'm building Disco Elysium's greatest mystery. The moment you come face to face with the game's rumored cryptid, the Insulindian Phasmid. To start, I cut the base of my terrain out of XPS foam, and I'm using my Proxon hotwire table to create the shape of the inlet. This particular miniature world takes place off the rocky, wintry coast of Martinez, a small, poor, dilapidated city that once stood more proudly before the war. To recreate that rocky, uneven coastline, I'm mixing some sculpt mold and water, along with an assortment of tiny pebbles, just to give it a bit more of a gritty texture. And it looks like tuna fish, but luckily it smells like sculpt mold So I'm just going to cover the entire base of the terrain with this stuff, making some areas higher or lower than others. And the lowest part right here is going to be where water meets the shore. Now that this has dried, the texture looks great, so let's get to painting. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, and I honestly love visiting our beaches in the winter. They're dark and cold and uninviting, but with moments of serene calm. And that's exactly the contrast of feelings I want to portray with this scene. In the game, there's this ongoing theme of hopelessness as you slowly discover just how bad the state of the world is for almost everyone. But then, something miraculous happens. Something you deeply hoped would come true, despite being told it's impossible. And you're filled with an overwhelming amount of hope in that moment. The tall reeds that claim this habitat tend to grow in tufts, so I knew I couldn't just cover one big area in static grass. Instead, using this method I found from Luke Towen's videos, I dotted some parchment paper with PVA glue and used the static grass applicator. I applied a similar method with these miniature vines to create a more varied clump of reeds. Now, with a few different variations of foliage made, I'm going to place them all one by one over the terrain, securing them with PVA glue. Using scenic cement and some white flocking, I'll create just a light blanketing of snow around the scene. You're not alone when you stumble upon this area. And you can tell by the sad little fire pit on the beach that's maybe on its last few embers. So, using my old dog brush, I'm creating a slight wood grain pattern. Then, using some sandpaper, I'm smoothing it out a bit to give it that driftwood appearance. And then I did the same thing for all these other tiny little pieces of foam. I think my camera died around this point, and I didn't realize it until after I painted all the little driftwood pieces. Womp womp. But luckily, I caught it fairly quickly, so no one has to miss out on the wash stage or the dry brushing. And now, I'm assembling the fire pit area complete with a driftwood bench. With this cotton ball, I'm going to pull just a small piece out, paint it, and use it to make an ashy yet weak trail of smoke. The deserter. Upon getting closer to the fire pit, 
you notice a crusty old man sitting by the embers, and you can tell he's been dying for a very long time. There is no hope left in his eyes, or much of anything at all. He's been here alone long enough that he's practically immune to the miracle that's about to reveal itself. Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. To quote the game from when you first meet Kim, if an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? End quote. The best NPC in probably any video game, he is cool, calm, and collected, always. Prefers to lead with logic, and is deeply anchored to reality, and definitely does not believe in cryptids, like the Insulindian Phasmid. In fact, witnessing the Phasmid is the last thing Kim would ever expect, so when he does, he is unequivocally caught off guard and absolutely amazed. Harry Dubois So, the figure I 3D printed for Harry didn't have any clothes on, so I decided to print this zombie guy in a leather jacket. I chopped off his head and started sanding down the body. Then I took some milliput and added a belly. Now I'll just chop Harry's head. And voila! Speaking of Harry, nothing is really going right in Harry's life right now. In fact, most everything has gone to shit. What, with waking up in your trashed hotel room, not remembering who you are, or that you're even a detective? is currently trying to solve a murder? That's pretty messy. At this point, Harry realizes that the trajectory of his life is set on a downward slope, and probably has been for a while. It feels too late and too hopeless to change that now. It would take a miracle to change it. Is what he witnesses next that miracle? For the making of the Insulindian Phasmid itself, I'm using some craft wire. The Phasmid described in the game is thin and spindly, built to blend in with the coastal reeds and mimic its surroundings, so the wire makes a great choice for that. Using some fabric glue, because I ran out of CA glue, I'm going to connect each of the three rows of insect legs to the body. Then, after priming the wire, I'm working with a nice, sunny golden shade that will cover the creature's body and head and blend in nicely amongst those reeds. For the head, I'm taking this plastic keypad part and covering it with milliput so I can mold it into the shape I want and carve some features later. With some of the leftover tall reeds, I'm attempting to create the pedipalps, the tiny moving mouth parts that all phasmids have. And with this craft stick, I'm just dotting a couple pairs of eye sockets. I also made little tiny eyeballs, so before the milliput hardens, I'm placing them in their respective eye holes. The phasmid is supposed to blend in with the reeds, but I mean, it's making a bold choice to reveal itself and intentionally choosing to let down its camouflage defenses. So I also want it to stand out a little. So I bought these miniature stalks of wheat to adorn the head and body. adding little wings. In the game, purple is the color associated with psyche and paranormal, so I made this purple wash to soak into the lines and details on the face, and went with periwinkle for the eyes. Now to hot glue everyone in place, being careful to not leave behind any strings of glue. And I'm also going to seal the edges here with hot glue and some plastic card on the sides. 
then I'm going to use some Vallejo still water and a few drops of murky water tint. Mix it together and lightly pour it where I want it. One thing to note about this stuff, it takes about 24 hours to dry and it's prone to cracking, so it's best to pour in very thin layers if you need depth. As the otherworldly Insulindian phasmid reveals itself amongst the reeds, the sun steadily rises in the sky, as a reminder that it's a new day, and with that comes a new opportunity to start again. The creature begins telepathically communicating with you, and listens as you recount your struggles and fears. As the phasmid leans in to reply, a meek and chilling voice rings out, reminding you that the arthropods are in silent and meaningless awe of you. They are watching when you're tired, when the vision spins out of control. The insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, they will come to raise you up, bud from you, banner-like, blossom from you, and carry you apart in a sky funeral in honor of your passing. Now, the time has come for the Insulindian Phasmid. subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you want to see me build next time. Until then, bye!